Welcome back friends, in this video we're gonna do some finishing touches to our game. We're gonna create a scrolling background effect along with some particles to make it look cool. And finally we're gonna create some sound effects. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is making the game more difficult as you play. Because the difficulty curve right now is linear. We're spawning an enemy each second because the enemy spawn timer is set to 1. And chances are, if you're good enough to play the game at that difficulty, you won't lose. And that makes the game pointless to play for a long period of time. We can fix this by making the game more difficult as you play, so that there's actually a point in getting a high score. We're gonna achieve this by decreasing the wait time of the enemy spawn timer each frame. We're gonna set it to be 2 at the beginning of the game, so that the beginning stage is relatively easy. And as time goes on, we're going to decrease it until we reach 0.5 seconds. And we're not going to go below 0.5 seconds because that would be just too difficult. In fact, it would probably be, be impossible, but you can experiment with this and see for yourself. We're going to cap it at 0.5 seconds, like I said. So let's set this back to be 2 and let's get into our script and implement this. Okay, I think we have a reference to the timer, right? We do. Good, now we just need to, inside of the process function here, we just want to access the wait time of the timer and subtract from it each frame. We're gonna subtract delta, let's rename delta real quick, uh, times, let's say, 0 0.005. So because process is run each frame possibly for 60 times per second, we don't want to subtract too big of a number here because that would decrease the wait time really fast and the game would get difficult immediately. So that's why we want to subtract a very small number here like 0 0.005 and obviously we need to multiply delta here to make this frame rate independent. We can also print this to see the wait time as it gets less and less. So let's play the game. And as you can see at the start, it was 2, now it's going down, it's currently at 1.97. And as time goes on, it is going to go down, down, down to 0.5. At that point, we want to stop it from decreasing anymore. To do that, we could use a clamp here, like we did with the player's position. I'm just going to do an if statement here. And I'm going to check for wait time. If it is less than 0.5 or let's say it's greater than 0 0.5, let's decrease it. Otherwise, if it is less, let's set it back to be 0 0.5. Let's actually make this an else if, else if it is timer.wait time, less than 0 0.5. Let's set it back to 0 0.5, and if it is 0 0.5, we'll just leave it alone. So with this, we should not go below 0 0.5 and that's good, but to test it, this, you know, uh, 0 0.05 isn't going to be fast enough and I don't want to wait for two minutes just to test this, so I'm just going to set this to be 0 0.5, just so we can see the end result real quick. And as you can see, we reached 0 0.5 and stopped decreasing the timer's wait time, and as you can see, the game is currently way more difficult. And yeah, okay, so this is what we want, but we obviously don't want it to go down that fast. So I'm gonna leave it at 0 0.005. I think that's a good number, but feel free to experiment here. Okay, so that is the difficulty. Next up, we're gonna create the scrolling background. Currently the background is empty and it looks horrible. So let's fix that. We're gonna use a parallax background node for this. And the reason is this has a scroll offset that we're going to use to create a scrolling background effect. A parallax background needs a parallax layer. And inside of the parallax layer, as a child of it, we're going to create a sprite. This sprite is going to be the purple stars, which is a texture we have inside of our assets folder here. The purple.png. I'm going to drag this here, as you can see it is a square. I want this to be not centered and I'm going to turn on region here and we're going to set the region to be the window size which is 
the width and the height here. I'm going to say 540 by 960. And that's basically going to stretch the sprite to cover the whole screen. But as you can see, currently it is not being repeated. We can fix that by going into the texture settings here and set the repeat to enabled. That way the sprite is repeated and it looks nice. So just this alone would look fine if you play the game. But I want the background to scroll so that, you know, the game feels more alive, I guess. And we can do that with the scroll offset of the parallax background. And we're going to do that from our script. So let's go to the game script here. I'm quickly going to create a reference up here called parallax background, let's say PB. And like I said, this has a scroll offset. So inside of our process here, let's stop printing the wait time. Inside of our process here, we're going to say pb.scroll offset. And this is a vector2, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a look at it. Yep, it is a vector2. So this has a y property. We're going to add to this each frame delta times, let's create a variable called scroll speed. And up here, let's create that variable. Let's set this to be 100. OK. So this will increase the scroll offset each frame, which is what we want. I also forgot to do something here. Inside of the parallax layer, we need to go to the motion settings here and set up the mirroring. So this will make it so that when the background is scrolling, it mirrors itself so that it looks like an infinite, never-ending texture. If we play the game now without mirroring, you will see that the background is just you know going down and there's nothing behind it, nothing coming after it. But if we set up mirroring here, and the way we do that is we're going to say 960 for the Y. And we don't care about the X because the background will move from up to down and it will never move left and right. So the X mirroring doesn't really matter in this case. But for the Y, we want it to mirror itself at the end of the window here. So let's take a look at it again. And you can see that with the mirroring, it is repeating itself as it scrolls. And this is the final effect that we want. This looks fine. As the last thing, I'm going to check the scroll offset, actually. Because currently, if we print this, let's print the y value, actually. You'll see that it just keeps on increasing. And that's fine. And if we leave it like this, I don't think we would see any problems. but. You might run into some issues if you just let the game running for a long period of time. So let's be responsible and fix that as well. So we know that the screen is 960 pixels. So we can simply say pb scroll offset dot y. If it is greater than or equal to 960, we can just reset it. And because we're resetting it at the exact moment it mirrors, this shouldn't be you know, visible. Let's also print it. So now, when the scroll offset goes above 960, let's wait for it. It should reset and you know, there's no visible difference. And that's good. And that is the scrolling background effect. Next up, I'm going to create some particle effects to enhance the look of our background. Let's create a GPU particles node here. And we're going to call this stars, star particle effect. I'm going to move it up here. We're going to create a process material here. And I'm going to put this at the center on the x-axis, which is 270. And I'm going to move it up a little. Let's say negative 50. You can see the particles being emitted there. We're going to set the amount to be like 20. 
and I want the emission shape to cover the whole X axis of the game area. So we're going to go into the material here and set the emission shape to be a box. And the extents are going to be 270 on the X so that we're emitting at the full width of the game screen. Let's set the gravity to be zero. We don't need it. And I'm also going to set the spread to be zero because we want these particles to go straight down. We don't want them to, you know, have a spread. And the direction is going to be actually negative one on the Y because we want these to go down. Okay, let's give these guys some velocity. So the initial velocity, I'm going to say negative thousand. I want these to go down rather fast. So both of these are going to be negative thousand. Now we can see them going down. I'm not going to use this default texture for the particles. So down here we have a texture slot. I'm going to use the star.png that I have. And this is going to create this effect, basically. Finally, I'm just going to change the lifetime of these to be 1.25. I'm going to pre-process them for like maybe five seconds, let's say. And I think that's going to be all for this effect. So now if you play the game, we have this nice, you know, star effect that makes it so that the game just feels faster now. It feels like we're going through space really fast. Okay, good. And we can stop printing the scroll offset here. Okay, so that is the star particle effect. And finally, as the final touch to the game, we're going to create some sound effects. Let's take a look at our audio folder here. So we have an explode hit and laser sound. So we're going to have all of these inside of the game scene here. I'm going to create a node called SFX. Let's put this at the top and inside of here as the child of this, we're going to create an audio stream player for each of our sounds. So three audio stream players here. The first one is going to be the laser sound. The second one is going to be the hit sound. Third one will be the explode sound. So the laser sound is going to be for the player. Let's give it the laser.ogg file. The hit sound is going to be when the laser hits an enemy. And the explode sound is going to be when the player dies. Okay, let's go into our script and create a reference for these sounds. Okay, now we simply need to play these at the right time. So the laser is going to be in the player laser shot function here. So at the end here, we can say laser sound dot play. The enemy hit is going to be different because we currently don't have a signal for when the enemy gets hit. So let's do that last. And the explode is going to be for when the player gets killed. So up here, let's say explode sound play. So with these alone, we should have a laser sound. And we should also get a sound when the player dies. And we do. Apologies if that was a bit loud. Uh, but OK. So finally, let's go into the enemy script. And in here, we're going to create a new signal called hit. And we're going to emit this inside of take damage. So if the enemy got hit, just emit the hit signal. If the enemy got hit with the laser and if it didn't die, let's just emit the hit signal. And back in the game script, when we spawn an enemy, we're going to connect the signal to a function called on enemy hit. Let's create this. And in here, we can just play the hit sound. And now when we hit enemies, A sound should play. It didn't. Mm, let's see why. Hmm. Okay, the problem is obviously I'm not emitting hit when the enemy is killed, so we're only getting it the first time we hit the regular enemy. So, my mistake there. So, we should also play this when they get killed. We can also emit the hit signal when they get killed as well, but I'm just going to do it this way. 
So now when we hit them, we should get the hit sound both when they take damage and when they die. Okay, great. So that is the sound effects. And that is going to be it for this lecture. This is all I wanted to teach in this series. Feel free to take this game and create something of your own. Practice makes perfect and it is the best way to learn. If you found the video and the series useful, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Godot, I have a course where I teach the basics of Godot for beginners. If that's interesting to you, please check the link in the description. Thank you very much for watching guys. Stay tuned for more videos and I will see you in the next one.